for the community. And um, as usual, it is a joy for me to be with you, especially as we focus our attention on prayer this morning. Father, we give your name honor, we give your name glory, we give your name praise. Minister through me so that some life will be touched. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For those of you, as a fact, all of you know me too, we asked to help out. And uh, I suppose that being a minister, you've got to talk. You've got to interact. But my nature, the truth is, I'm really more of a reserved, quiet person. You should be not want to be deep, but that's the fact. Okay, in the environment, other than having to interact with persons, you will not believe that this is the same person. I believe that sometimes these things are good and sometimes they can be bad. Um, I am not the kind of person who talks very long either. And I suppose that that can be good and bad sometimes. So just to be consistent with the service and things that were already said, I, I, you are supposed to know that I do not even think I told my family this. But just after the death of, um, I don't think the very last sister, I think it was before, I, I happened to, I went into uh, a Road road uh, station where I usually purchased um, my petrol on a Monday morning to be exact. And as I sat in the, in the vehicle, I began to feel a little faintish. So I got out of the vehicle, and uh, there were obviously persons who were in the petrol station, the attendants and those, them. And um, I started to walk around, and then the thought came to me, why not you cannot tell one of these persons who are in the station that you're not really feeling too well? Then he, I said, I'm not going to say it to anybody. And that may have been a foolish thing too. Because the hospital was very close. But then he decided, I started to feel very clammy, getting wet. And then he said, I'm going to take a charge, which may have been a foolish thing too. The drive to, to my doctor who lived in Cape Hill, who operates all of Cape Hill. So I said, Lord, you are going to have to take me to Cape Hill. When he got up there, he had, he, had no, he had gone to, there are two, there are two locations he had read from. He was not already getting his money, but I'm going to another location. So I know how to drive from that area to the other location, still not feeling 100%. When he got there, and he sat down, I, I, I got into the office, sat down, obviously we feeling very clammy. And when he felt that God would have faded out. But there was a lady who was supposed to have seen the doctor before me, and I felt so bad, I asked her for a chance to wear her. So when they found her, they were in, she apparently told the doctor that I wanted to wear her in bed. So when they checked, they said, You're ready to be better in truth. So as usual, um, they went to the restroom to study, and then he asked me to, to get on and check my heart and all the various organs, and then he had me this time. Having done that, he then sent me to bed up across the bedroom, had this case, ECG. First time in my life I've ever had so many things attached to me. So the only who took it, she um, she said, well, your blood pressure, when she compared my blood pressure at the doctor's office to where she would operate, she the your daughter has escalated from year to year. So she said, you know what has gone wrong with that question of race. You are thinking and walking and thinking of your own mind. So you've got to relax a little bit. So she took the examination on, on the heart. And anybody who had an ECG, but, uh, I'm not speaking with much experience because that's the first I've ever had. But she gave me the reading. And she said to me, all right, you 
you can rest comfortably. Your heart is in perfect condition. That is not your heart at all. What you need to do is try and relax a little bit. So then related to her circumstances, you say, I can really understand when you're under so much pressure, under so much stress. You can tell you what it You can tell you what it is. But as all the others would have said, God said, look up. And for some reason, I love Joe. And sometimes it appears to me as though I have got the world through the Joe experience. But I, I promise you, and I promise God, that even though you stay in me, I will feel just God. I promise you that. My mother did not 100% understand speak to you. She would have had an operation, as you're aware. Uh, a few weeks ago, and she more confirmed the bed now. So I said, Can I have me say, God? But why me? But they have me say, Why not me? Why not me? I said all of that to say this that in this life, there are some situations that we will have to deal with that are not of our own making. But I believe that God is able. I believe the God we serve is not just able, he is more than able. He takes us to whatever situation we are going through. And that's why we need prayer. That's why we need prayer. I have a view that anyone who is called by the name of Christ and does not spend time in prayer. I want to read that. And I want to be very, very uh, precise in my speech so you understand it here. Any person who is called by the name of Christ and do not take time off, to shut the television off, Put on the side of the phone, cut our conversation, and play some time, quality time, and talk to your father. That person, in my opinion, is a spiritual liability. A spiritual liability. You are spiritually bankrupt. I find it difficult to understand. How am I going to be a Christian? How am I going to be connected to my father and I don't communicate with him? I find it difficult as a Christian to understand how am I going to understand what my father wants to say to me when I don't communicate with him. So I want for you to visualize a church, a family like this, where there are persons who come to church and do not spend time talking to their father. I am of the view that the church will never ever develop and grow because within the body are people who are spiritually weak. So I want us to understand that when the church comprises of 50% or more of persons who are spiritually or are their spiritual liability, the church will always seem to be in crisis. I want us to understand that those of us who are called in the name of Christ, if we are not making a valuable contribution in prayer to the ecclesia, you are not a part of the called out. If you are part of the called out, you cannot live a life where you are only the beneficiary of other people's prayer. 
Because sometimes we come to church and uh, we, 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 we seem to get some blessings because of other persons. We need benefit from the prayer at a time that other people spend before God. And we are making no contribution whatsoever to the success of the church. Of the, the ecclesia, the call out. So, so it should be shameful and disgraceful for any one of us who can honestly say with himself, I don't really pray. We cannot honestly feel a sense of being connected to God and do not spend quality time before God in prayer. In the serious situation that the church has got to deal with. I want to reiterate this fact. That whilst we may have our names on the church book, lots of persons, their names are not going to be recorded in the book of life because of prayerless life. So we need to become the beneficiary. Other people pray. The church is being blessed. And things are happening. And we are proud of the success just because of default. Because we are there. But we make no contribution in terms of prayer. I don't know you that any person who is called by the name of Christ and you are seeking to know God, you have to pray. You cannot have a relationship with God. You cannot convince me that you are having a relationship with God and no prayer. It is, it is, it is to me absolutely impossible to have a real relationship with God and no prayer. The truth is, if there are persons who pray and the devil attacks them left, right, and center, what are those persons who want prayer? So we cannot, we cannot ever grow in Christ and don't take time off to go on our knees and, and spend time with God. The person who is called by the name of Christ, we do not have the luxury of saying I don't feel like praying. You can feel like praying. But even though you may not feel like praying, you have got to pray. Amen. It is compulsory. The child of God has got to understand that prayer is like blood that flows through our veins. And the person who does not spend time in prayer, you do not have any authority to say anything. As a matter of fact, the person who does not pray, I, I, I consider them almost not in their power of us. How can you be a child of God? I don't pray. When I was a little boy growing up in Sunday school, they said, read your Bible. Pray every day and you will grow. Those two basic things. Read your Bible and pray every day. You will grow. The problem with the church is we have become a place where we live our theatrics. We go to church and, and all of these things are good. We enjoy good worship. We enjoy good facility, nice air condition and all these things. But none of these things are going to assist us when the problems of life confront us. When we know who we believe. When we know what he is capable of doing. When we can say to our fact, I know my God because he has answered my prayer in the past. Amen. Then that is the only thing that will sustain us. 
Anyone call the name of Christ and feel comfortable if you are sitting here this morning and you feel comfortable he's in the church Sunday after Sunday, Sunday and Tuesday night after Tuesday night and the only prayer you know is when some person gets him in prayer and you feel comfortable with that and you tell me that you are trying to bury your body or brother wash your sanctified, safe, sanctified, holy God, fill water back place, I will ask you where. We can fool ourselves. But we cannot fool God. We cannot fool God. I believe if God had to come down from heaven right now and, and identify persons who want prayer or prayer when they feel like seven persons may be found guilty. The church has to come back to a place when our lives are saturated with prayer. When prayer becomes a part of our being. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, the story of is told of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He goes into the wilderness for not one day, 40 days to commune with his father. Now, that speaks also of fasting, of which I'm not really dealing with this morning. Jesus recognized that he was going to experience a difficult situation, and he realized that it was absolutely necessary for him to talk to his father about it. And for 40 days he went through this. Let me ask all of us a question. When last did you fast? As children of God who call ourselves Christians as persons who would, who would come to church every Sunday morning and when the doors are open, when last did you put aside a, a plate of food? When last did you tell yourself, I am going to come to a place in my life where I make a conscious decision. I am going to spend some time with God today. I won't even want food. When last? Jesus for 40 years did this. And if he is the son of God, and he's our greatest example, and we are following after him, it's an, I, I am of the opinion that, that there's some things that he did that we must emulate. The church has come to a place when we are so caught up with the, with the things that are insignificant. And the things that are more significant to the development of our relationship with God are thrown through the window and on which praise one. Matthew chapter 1 verse 25 says to me that Jesus goes up early and went to a solitary place to pray. I know that Jesus always found it necessary to find a place that is quiet. A place where he was shut away from all activity and communicated with his father. And sometimes we find it difficult to pray simply because we don't want to shut away ourselves and spend time with God. One of the saddest days of the church is the fact that only when we find ourselves in a grave situation, when things are not looking good for us, we bombard heaven with prayer. God is called morning, noon, and night. Only because we find ourselves in a situation where we do not know how to get out. But here is 
accepted Jesus early in the morning, finding himself in a solitary place to pray. Congregation, I'm of the view that battles are still won on our knees. Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes we may have a few dollars that we can go to the doctor and pay a doctor's fee. And we believe that because we can afford that, that the doctor is Jesus. As a little boy, I thought that doctors never used to die because they had the medication. I thought undertakers never used to die because they officiated a funeral nor a priest. But as I grew older, I realized all of them were dying. What am I saying to you is this. The doctors who prescribe the medication, they are dying. You know why? Because they have no control over their lives. So regardless of how much money we have, God is the person. When we cry out to him that the woman with the issue of blood, she just took the hem of his garment and she was healed. I believe that lots of people can be healed if they are called on the name of Jesus. I believe that victories can be won in the church when we begin to call on the name of Jesus, when prayer services are called. This is the busiest thing for the church when prayer services are called. If the church is guilty of one thing, it is the, it is the guilt of prayerlessness. You will notice that the only prayers were called in the Bible. God is going to honor our prayer if my people who are called by my name. Pastor Eckhart can pray can preach from now on the coast of home. Prayer is important. The prayer of the saints. We cannot afford to just stop the church or just have church as usual in a place where, where prayer has not become a, a, a vital part of our existence. I have not asked the church to to use the second Sunday for prayer just because it wanted something to do. I believe that God has dropped into my spirit. Bring the church back to a place of prayer. We can have the best worship, the best music, the best everything. If prayer is missing, an important area of our lives is missing. We need to get back to prayer. We need to find back those family altars. As, as people, we need to put away the electronic equipment sometimes. Put on the cell phone. Shut off the television. Come to a place where you are saying, God, you brought me through a whole night. And other persons died in their sleep. But you brought me through. We need to come to a place where we get warm on evenings after tough days work. So many vehicles on the road. God, I thank you that you brought me back safely. We need to come to a place in our lives where we are able to enjoy a good environment at home and eat confidently. God, I thank you for this meal of the food. But we are comfortable. And so therefore, only a selected few persons find themselves in a place of prayer and we feel good about that. I'm saying to us that, that we, we, God will put an X alongside our names when it comes to the life of prayer. God wants us to understand that he has been so good to us and continues to be so good to us that when it comes to prayer, we should be ready and willing to, to surrender some time before God, I said, God, I'm here. Amen. I'm here. Yes, amen. In the book of Luke, 
chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, Jesus prayed all night before making an, uh, um, an important decision. This is when he was truly the 12. Jesus, look, if Jesus, God's son, a part of the Trinity, if he thought it necessary to pray when making decision, what would we mean? As Christians, we make some foolish decisions and then blame God. I don't want you that. The reason why we make some stupid decisions is because we are of the view that our intellectual ability is of such that based on normal procedure and patterns, I can do this. And so therefore we don't see God. We don't ask for God's direction anymore. We don't ask God if he approves this anymore. We just get up and do whatever we feel like doing. And then when things go wrong, we be in God. And come back and say, God, do this. God never was consulted in the first place. When you are a child of God, we need to understand that. We need to ask God for direction for our lives. We just can't take it upon ourselves to do things just how we feel doing it. We need to ask God. Jesus is going to make a decision to choose some apostles and he spent. After all, I look in the church and say, not you, you, not you, you. That's a five minute thing. Look for a minute decision for anybody. You look for the church. And because of a person, see me building, you say you, you not, you not you. But what Jesus? Not me. Daddy, Daddy, I have got to make a decision. But before you make a decision, Dad, you know everything. So talk to me that. Talk to me that. But what 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 do those who are who, who know about the God? Well, this is my opinion, and I am going to have it my way. So, God said, Why? Why? I never see a this on your, on your case, then you ask God to take him off. You never ask God anything about the decision, and there are some decisions that, that impacts our lives. That we never ask for God's opinion on. And then when things go wrong, we blame God. But what? Jesus is making a decision on the trap and he prays all night about this. Some persons have been asked, but what can you pray about all night? Everybody who never says, oh God, all night pray with Some people. Some people say, Pastor, I can't have that. I get sleep too quick. Pastor, I can't have that. I got to go work the next day. Pastor, I cannot have that because I got a sleeping problem. And maybe you didn't pray with a sleeping problem. If probably you should pray, you would not have a sleeping problem. Pastor, you know, I will let you, I will let you come to prayer meeting, but you know, I pray this morning, right? You know. Pastor, I will let you come to prayer meeting, but I forgot I had one of them to waste something. But Jesus prayed all night. Jesus prayed all night. I believe that when, when the church understands, when we understand that prayer is vitally important, not only to the church as, as, a, as a gathering, but when, when we understand that for me, for me, my relationship with God is contingent on a man prayer life. If I do a prayer, if I do a prayer, how am I going to know what God wants for me to do? Jesus goes into a mountain and pray and continue to pray all night to God. All night. He, he's talking with his father. But person, 
I'm sure that if they are person in this congregation right now, because those have to be married for, for a lot of a lot of years, sometimes you 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 you, you don't do these things. But those of you who are in a relationship, you're not quoting. Learn looks you. Because you're selling your form and work 24-7. You always want something to say that person. You told them you love them at seven at ten past seven. At four past seven, you tell them again. At past seven, the same thing. You will tell that person to make me a whole day. But when it comes to God, we can't find anything to tell God. When last you pray and say to God, God, I love you. When last you pray and I said, God, God, you know, I really appreciate you. I, I really magnify you. When we were in New York, because they do funerals a little bit different from us, they have the funerals at night and buried in the day. A young lady called me and she said, You know something? I have always heard you say this, you know, but you know, when I heard the preachers say tonight, they resonated with me. She said, The preacher said, Why are you going to wait until some person is dead to tell them you love them? The preacher said that. I said, when, when he said that, you came straight my mind because I've always heard you said that. Why is it that we're going to be up on to be in trouble to call God? Can you think of some person who they don't talk with you, they don't call you, they, they, you don't even see them. But as soon as they run into trouble, especially for financially very poor, how are you doing? I'm in trouble. Who got in trouble? I want some money. What, what is your response going to be? Person will talk with you, they don't call you, they see you on the streets and they are hey, I'm gone. But when they are in trouble, they call you. But what is your response going to be? You know something? I thank God, though, that regardless of who we are, this has a mercy that says, strength and strength. I thank God that, that even though these are men that are, are, are so disrespectful to him that when he calls on us when we call on him sorry he answers though he answers if god was a man we would be in a serious trouble as a relation communication but you see god god is different from us he functions differently when it comes to the transfiguration According to St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, 28 and 29. And it came to pass about an eighth day after these saints, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain again. They, 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 it appears to me as though there is something significant about, about putting yourself away. For me, I love to pray when I just pray, talk in the morning at 4 o'clock. But all televisions are off. No phone is real. Quiet. And I'm talking with God. Jesus seemed to have, have preferred to shut himself away from the crowd. And what did I say? And as he prayed, the fashion of his covenant was altered. Listen, when you pray, when you pray, God is able to change your very appearance. There's something about prayer that is able to change things. I didn't want to suggest to us here at Ruby, find an altar at home. Find a place where we spend quality time before God. Find a place where we can say to God, God, I thank you. Listen, if I did not know God for myself, if I did not know how to pray, when I was faced with all of the difficulties, I would have crumbled. But I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that He is able. Keep what I've committed unto him against that day. I'm not saying to you that, that sometimes I do not feel like relaxed in my prayer other. If I said that to you, I will be not honest. Sometimes you don't always feel the pain. But the time you don't feel the pain is the time you should pray. You see, because God is trying to get your attention.
prayer. I believe that prayer and the enemy is trying to strip you from doing. This is where God is going to give you a breakthrough. This is where God is going to come through for you. I tell you this. I am not one of those persons that God answers prayer immediately, but I tell you this. He always comes through. Amen. Always come through. Yes, Listen, we are serving a prayer, answering God. Amen. We are serving a God. Sometimes you pray and you don't even remember what you prayed for. But in the fullness of time, God comes through for you. And you're asking yourself, how did this happen? You prayed every day, but God knew when, how and where. We need a prayer. We need to cast all of our cares upon Him. Remember Daniel? Daniel was in the land's dead. You think you think because he had dead Daniel, he, he could walk the land and say, you, who, 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 um, you know where I am, Daniel? The land would have made a mess of him. But Daniel understood that even in the land's dead, God is still there. Still, still call on God. Listen, when you are in the lion's den, the lion does not have to eat. You call on God. God has the authority to close the lion's mouth. Listen, when you are in the three Hebrew boys, you can still stand on the promises of God. You can still talk to God. When it looks to you, I want nothing is going to happen. Still call on the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't, don't be comfortable anymore as a Christian and don't pray. It will not work. It will not work. Amen. Daniel was consistent in prayer. There's something about consistency in prayer. Do I know I, if, if this is the one thing, but I'm going this. So if the doctor says to you, take two tablets a day for a whole month, as long as they feel good. I finish with them. The doctor said, take a full month. But watch us. Doctor Jesus says, prayer, I want to hear you every day. I want to hear you every day. Got a problem? They are one you call daddy. Nothing has happened. You, you, your daddy had a talk. And for the most part, all you just tell daddy, I want, I want, I want. Daddy may decide I'm going to give you as long as Daddy meets your requirement. You are gone. Tablets finish. We treat God that way. As soon as our prayer has been answered, we are finished with Him and that. I don't know even need to touch the Bible problem because there are persons whose Bibles are closed until Sunday morning. I don't know how they get that done. Because for me, for me, I am going back through Genesis. And there's some things I am seeing in Genesis that were always there. But I begin to have that I didn't see this. So who can a person not read God's word and do a prayer? Tell me how you can be a child of God and do a prayer and do a prayer either. <coughs> To me, that, that, that is catastrophic. You wonder where the church has got so much turmoil and, and misery sometimes. You know why we can't smile sometimes? Because there's nothing to smile about. You don't pray. You don't read your Bible. And expect to grow. Expect to grow. You cannot grow. You have to read your Bible. You may not understand everything. I, I, I don't know how to say everything either, but the Holy Spirit is able to minister to you. Amen. So you cannot grow in Christ and not read your Bible. Cannot. You will come to church and be a spiritual liability. And sometimes we can't rejoice, we can't praise God because. It is almost as though God has not done anything for us because you don't pray, you don't read your Bible, so therefore I have nothing to rejoice about. But for me, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of what God has done for me, when I read His Word, when I read the Word of God, and He tells me, 
that the trumpet should sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. When you understand and reading God's words, what the implications are, you tell me don't read God's words. Especially these days. Some people look at their cell phone and they watch every WhatsApp message. All cellular phones are loaded with WhatsApp messages, but they won't take five minutes to read one verse of scripture. Sad. Sad for the church. Sad for us who are probably the name of Christ. But Daniel was consistent in prayer all of his life. Daniel was consistent in prayer all of his life. In chapter 2, Daniel was consistent in prayer as a young man. He was a young man and he was consistent. In chapter 6 of Daniel, when he had no more order, he still was in prayer. In chapter 9, 3 to 19, and 10, 1 to 3, you can see that Daniel also practiced not only praying, but fasting. These are these are the men of faith in the scripture. These are men of faith who trusted God and served God. They understood the significance of prayer. And these are the men who pray to God, who we know understand their history. We we, we now look at them in terms of their examples. And if they are the men of faith who serve and trust to God and their examples to us, you tell me that we should pray? The church has to pray. The church has to fast. The church has to understand that the reading your Bible is important. The persons, I remember when, when as an individual I was doing, I was studying. And there are times when I took the textbooks with me. And every opportunity, if I, if I had gone some place more waiting on someone, I would have always had my textbook with me. Because I'm thinking, this is time that I can spend a little, even if it's 10 minutes in the textbook. When I came home from work, before I could have even said good evening, I had gone straight to the table, all hours of the night, books ahead of me studying. You know why? Because they wanted to pass an exam. But watch us as Christians. The Bible is located in one place from Sunday to Sunday. And then there are persons who don't even use the, the written word, they use the, the, the um, computers, which is not a bad thing. Only used when we're in church. Listen, I want to suggest to us here this morning if you want to see God's hand at work in your life, pick up the Bible and read. Amen. If you are experienced joy unspeakable, talk to daddy. Amen. Talk to daddy. Amen. Have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. Tell him all about your troubles. Amen. He will hear your cry and he will answer. Amen. By and by. Amen. I attended a funeral of a young lady on Friday. This young lady <coughs> suffered cancer. Age 51, she is already gone. Beautiful young lady. Serve God. I mean, she was close to an angel. But God called her home. She called her husband the very same day the morning she died. She had called her family member before. And she, she prayed over them. Just before she died, she took oil and poured oil over her husband. She said to him, and, and while she was dying, she knew she would She called her husband and said, Hon, I'm going home to heaven. And she sang, and she sang, and she sang her way until she just slipped from time in eternity. You know why she did that? Because she knew God. Amen. She knew God. You can only you can only experience these things that even at the point of death when you are able to say even though I'm going I'm going to be with Jesus. You can only do that when you know God. When you have a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God. Listen. Jesus said 
man shall not live by bread alone, which means man needs bread, but not bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When we pray, when we read our Bibles, our life becomes more interesting. God begins to work. We, we have a better relationship with God. And I tell you this, anybody, I challenge you this morning, anybody who lives a life of prayer and scripture, and find it easy not to speak with another brother, something is wrong. You cannot, you cannot be a child of God who understands the scripture and prayer. I don't try to have relationships mended. It is fundamentally important. Because the scripture will convince us and convict us. But if we don't read the Bible, if we don't pray, there's nothing that is able to propel us to do these things. But when we read the scripture of prayer, the Holy Spirit is able to minister to us. So don't take don't take prayer for granted. It works. It works. There are things there are things that we will want to come to pass in our life that they are not going to happen. The Bible says these these will not come out other than to prayer and fasting. Congregation, listen to me. You may not be the kind of person who is able to pass the effort on the others to come in your prayer. That's not what I'm saying to you. Find some time to talk to God. Do even for your food. God are those cool little tricks when you will say, for what we are about to receive, may we gratefully hear amen. This cool this thing. When you are talking to God about your food, try and tell God how much you appreciate food here. Tell God how much you appreciate your food. Listen, when you go home, find a place at home. I am practicing even when you go to work. When it's sick, Lord, you control today. Amen. Listen, you don't have to buy that speech. It's free. Yes. Talking about it's free. Yes. Find some time to talk to your father. Yes. Find, listen. My two sons are not little boys anymore. But there's a difference between they don't call me no son or nothing. Because they know I've got a different level. But as old as they are, you know how sweet it sounds when they say, Dad? Yes. Daddy? Yes. Might they beg them, you know? Yes. But they lower themselves, boy, they understand. You may be taught anything, but it's still tomorrow. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so when, when, when they say, Daddy, they sound sweet. Yes. Those of you who watch children, when they say, Mommy, or Daddy, don't sound good. Amen. It sounds good. Amen. So, so imagine if, if you and I, if we be good to hear Daddy and yeah, Mommy, when we go and go Jesus and we say, Dad, morning. You know who Jesus is? Yes. You remember him? So, so let us go to a place in our life where we, where we understand the significance of calling on our Father. Listen, there are some things I can't handle. I said, Dad, you deal with this. Yes. Turn about with Daddy, man. Yes. You, you name Daddy? You name Daddy? You, 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 you know who is more than me. You know tomorrow. You know yesterday. You know Daddy, you heard this. But sometimes we can turn them over to daddy because we don't even know where to find daddy in first place. But let me let me remind you, daddy is just one prayer man. Daddy is still there. Daddy still wants to hear you. Daddy still wants to communicate with you. Find some time to pray. Find some time to talk to your father. Tell him everything. There's a thing that you wouldn't want to tell your sister or your brother. Tell daddy. If there's one person who wants a secret, daddy can. That he can, and 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 no lying man. Did he say that all those different platforms can intercept Daddy? Daddy's got it tight, so we can afford to talk to Dad, and he will he will he will keep it until that day. <laughs> so we can afford to talk to him. And I don't know whatever we're going through, whatever we're going through, let her Daddy know. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to stand with me this time. I want for us to spend a few moments around the altar. 
I don't know what you may be going through this morning. It's not my business either. But I only just want to do as God would want me to do. Sometimes our victories are not won because we have told ourselves, I'm going to be, I went last week. If you're sick, come on. If you've got financial problems, don't tell Pastor Alpha, I got to. If your body don't feel good, my tell Jesus. That, that, that's the way grow. That's, that, that's, that's, that's the only way I know. If you've got children that give you problems, my tell Jesus. Whatever you are going through, tell the Master. You want a breakthrough in your life, my tell Jesus. Listen, I'm going to move from where I'm standing. I'm going to come down there and talk to Daddy myself too. Don't be shame. Don't be shame. The words of the devil listen, are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell Daddy. Daddy wants to hear you. He's not tired. He don't get frustrated. All Daddy wants to do is see you. You, you stay too long before you come. But he will stay here. You. Are you weary this morning? If you're heavy hearted, talk to Dad. He wants to talk with you and the worst team leads us. Such a friend.